Great. Well, we got right. call to order at six. six oh, I'm going to call us to order at 6.06. .06, and before we get started, I need to add one item to the consent agenda, which is item J, to award the bid for the driver's ed purchase of dryer, driver's ed vehicles to Deniker Chevrolet in the amount of $18,954. So that would be included in the consent agenda. What was that amount? <coughs> 18954 so there was a thirty thousand dollar driver ed yeah. item. Is that just dropping the price? No. Uh, so one is to allow the expenditure from the fund, and the other is to actually award the bid. Okay. So both actions are necessary to complete the transaction. All right. And there may be some ancillary costs that go along with that to outfit the second brake and all that stuff. But the purchase of the vehicle was the the award the driver's ed. Is there any public comment? All right. Um, I need a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. All right, Carol. And was that? I'll second. And Steve seconds. All those in favor of approving the consent agenda, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. It's passed. Okay. We'll move down to executive limitations uh, C2 update on the uh, final FY17 financial report that was included in your packet. Are there any questions regarding that report? is to an action item to approve the FY18 board work plan draft. And that was also included in the packet. Um, at the board retreat, I believe are all, all the boards approved the, the plan as it, as it was written, knowing that there were going to be some shifts in some things um, in regards to board monitoring reports, um, because we are coming to the end of our working time in this year and it may not be necessary for us to produce these reports. We may um, make uh, work on the interpretations and get the interpretations approved, but then hand it off to the SD board to take on as their, for their, as their work for the upcoming year. So, so this, is <coughs> this is the same draft that was at the retreat, we realized there was going to be some changes to it. We were going to just approve it as it sits drafted and then allow the changes to be brought up as they come. Correct. Yes. Any questions? All we need is a motion and a second. Motion to approve the report. Is there a second? Okay. All those in favor of approving the FY18 board work plan draft as presented, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. It's passed. Moving um, down to board management and governance, update on the policy governance. Um, at, at the time, this uh, this agenda went out, the policy and governance group had not met. They have since met and they're beginning to um, sort of organize their work. Uh, last year they did the first half of the policies and this year they're gonna work on the second half and like I said earlier, they'll probably work on drafting the interpretations so we'll see those come through. And, and there may be some monitoring reports, but some of them may just be handed to the new SD board as this is what we've agreed on as an interpretation, and here's some possible ideas of evidence, but it's, you know, in your court now to over the next year gather the evidence so that you'll be prepared to 
have a monitoring report as your working order. Um, and the SD board members are, are a part of that policy and governance committee as well. So they're we're new to it and they are they were at the meeting. Any questions? Okay. Update on the M uh, Miami Ring Union Unified School District Board was included in your packet where there was one error. Um, that listed Krista Seringo on the communication, community engagement committee, and it was actually Jen Stanley. Um, it was one of those where I was looking at a list of names and thought Jen and typed Krista. So, I don't know if any, anyone had any questions. Okay. All right. On to an update from the renovation committee. Want to roll it into Patrick's part? Uh, well, um, so the renovation committee met in early August with Lee Dorr from Dorr and Whittier, uh, and obviously members of the committee. And uh, you'll see right there the uh, conceptual drawing that uh, Dorr and Whittier presented. It addressed all of the priorities that the committee had identified um, throughout its process and um, without really any extras except a new gym which is sorely needed and um, stayed within the footprint of the building and would bring it up to today's teaching standards and set us up serve students at this, uh, the five towns for the next 50 years or more. So, um, and I'm just going to end it there because Patrick's got all the details. Any questions? So Any what we're seeing today was voted out of that committee. So what you're seeing today, um, so my recommendation to you is based on the committee's recommendation to me. So there, that committee's charge was to make a recommendation to me and then for me to consider that as I make a recommendation to you. Any other questions? All right, let's we'll finish our updates. Um, we have an update uh, for the Hannaford Career Center that was included in your packet. Any questions regarding that? Now we're down to our action item to approve the superintendent's recommendation for the bond project. So now Patrick can get into the details. Okay. So um, given the scope of the work we're talking about and the amount of money and the, the sort of publicity this um, would get, I thought it was important as I make my recommendation to you that you had sort of all of the thinking that I've done that led to me making the recommendation to you that I am, which is to move forward with the bond this fall, um, early November, for $35 million. So I laid out um, just a lot of different thoughts I have about why I think we ought to move forward in pursuing this bond for your consideration. So I guess I would just take any, any questions you have about some of those points that I made in that recommendation to you. And then we can talk a little bit about the project as well, uh, as you're thinking about what direction to go to move forward or not move forward with the bond this fall. Does that make sense? So any questions about the recommendation? <clears throat> I'd just like to reiterate my feeling that it's very important that we include a new elevator down at the middle school wing so that um, whoever may need to use it has the ability to use it because it is very difficult to get from upstairs middle school all the way down to this elevator, come down the elevator, and go all the way back to that wing. 
for the next class. Um, and it would, uh, I think it would be a, a good idea to put in that second elevator. And um, since we have this opportunity now, we can do a good job of incorporating universal accessibility to as many people as possible. And I personally know a number of people who um, would benefit from having that. And not just personally, but also um, out in the community and for all of the other stakeholders that we have. That amount is currently included. It is not currently included. <clears throat> um, what's currently included is either doing some work on the elevator that currently exists or possibly relocating the elevator that currently exists. But it wasn't uh, part of the scope of what you'll see tonight, and that isn't part of that $35 million, does not include adding a second elevator. Uh, it's mostly just trying to address whatever functionality issues there might be with the one elevator that we do have. So, and there's, there's a couple of different ways that we could go about that elevator, uh, the second elevator. And there's a, a process question that comes to mind too. So, so right now we're talking conceptual, what might happen. Once the bond passes, there's then an 11 month design phase where lots and lots and lots of details get ironed out over the course of those 11 months before it then goes out to bid. Um, so knowing that, one approach could be in this project, we add money to the 35 million to allow for the addition of a second elevator, or we sort of see what we can do to get a second elevator, knowing that there's seven over $7 million in soft costs here that is a pretty rough estimate as to what some of those soft costs may be. That $7, $7 million is 25% of the whole project. So um, figuring in probably two hundred fifty to 500000 for for the addition of another elevator, that gives us two options on how we could go. Um, the other again, options could be to have them design it as an alternate, um, so that it could be uh, either added or subtracted depending on how the bids come in down the road. Right. Um, also curious about how many uh, how many more estimates we might get um, in this process, either before the bond or after the bond, um, just to see how the costs are tracking either towards the amount that we've agreed to tonight or how we fare afterwards before it's put out to bid or if they're even anticipating doing a post-bid, I mean a, a pre-bid uh, secondary estimate at like the end of construction documents. So there's currently no plan to move forward with a, with a second uh, estimate prior to the bond, okay. in part because last time around with the 32.6 million, that, that figure got some attention as well. And it prompted people wondering, well, that's one estimator's figure that they're giving us for the, the concepts that we've talked about. Um, so a second estimate was sought after and actually secured. And it came in right, on, uh, right in, in line with that first estimate from the same folks that did this estimate for us. So we previously had them do that second check and it came in close, so we could spend several thousand dollars to do another check on this before putting it out to bond. Um, but we have every reason to believe that that estimate is as good as an estimate as we're going to get from somebody else. So I guess I was um, thinking there might be some advancement to the design between November and March, or would that simply be on hold until the bond was approved? Well, so the my recommendation is for there to be a bond vote in November. So we would know by the end of November. So oh, once the... Sorry, I'm getting my... That's our typical right. bond dates mixed up here. So sorry. November is what we're talking about for a vote. We're starting everything, okay. Right. Yes. And basically, once, once the vote is passed, um, then we can initiate the design phase. No, I understand that. I'm thinking... Uh, earlier, I was thinking... If this group had some issues with the amount or the scope, what is, what's your timeline? 
I mean, I would imagine from now until November there's a pretty tight timeline for you to get the process going. Very warm. So. Um, and just to get word out and get information to folks and communicate about the information, the, the proposal. Uh, so the timeline for construction is if we get something to pass before December, January could sort of go either way, but certainly by the end of December, if we get a bond passed, then the summer of 2019, so not next summer, but the following summer, we would be able to begin construction. If we miss that window, like if it's January, again, could go either way, but certainly February or later, now we're looking at the summer of 2020 before we could break ground. Um, and in the meantime, construction costs are going up and, and it would increase the cost of the work or decrease the scope of the work we could get done. As I mentioned in here, if we use that, that $35 million figure, every month that we don't do something costs over $140,000 in estimated um, sort of increase in construction costs. Based on the 4 to 5% annual increase that the architects and, and estimators are telling us to assume as we project out. And that $35 million includes those projected increases out to the summer of 2019 when we begin that work. I just have a process question. So how do you want to do this? Do you want to do the presentation and then we have a motion and then we have a discussion? How, how do we need to do this? Uh, so the cleanest way would be for there to be a motion and then as part of the discussion, we could talk more about these points, we could see the presentation, talk about anything we need to talk about, then arrive at it and talk until we're ready to, until you're ready to oh. vote on the motion. Allison. I make a motion that we approve the $35 million bond vote for the renovation of the Mount Abe Middle, or Mount Abe Union Middle High School. Is there a second? No second. You want to start walking through the presentation and we can tie back to some of the bullet points or did you have a, a question around the bullet points, Carol? Um, I was wondering, um, should this come to the public, do you have a breakdown of what has, of everything uh, you can put a figure on? So if you do a certain thing, it's going to cost this. I think it's that, will that all be in this presentation? Yeah, there's, a, there's one slide on this presentation that shows a lot of that. I don't know that it shows everything, but it shows some of the big ticket items and some of the more controversial items. Um, so that's certainly there. And you'll notice that there's an agenda item immediately following this that suggests should, should this board decide to move forward with a bond in the fall, um, that they also then form a communications committee to really think about how do we get information out to folks between now and that. November vote if, the, if it's going to happen in November. I'm looking forward to this. All right. Um, so I should say I have no more information on this than basically anybody else that was at the study committee. I just happen to have the slideshow on my computer and I'm here talking with you about it tonight. So I'll invite Chris or Jess or Howard or uh, I don't see anybody else that was on the, the study committee, but chime in at any point as we're talking about some of the concepts. And I do want to just remind everyone that we're only at the concept phase. So what the doors look like, where certain things end up, is part of that 11-month design phase. Um, so I just want to keep us away from going down into the fine details and stay at the bigger picture concept level as we're thinking about the scope of work that's going to happen. All right, so the first slide simply shows an aerial view of the grounds and the facility to get a sense of where we're looking. So this is Airport Drive. Obviously you can see the track, the parking lots. And there's really the, the lighter um, orange color here is the current footprint. This darker orange is the addition of the new gym. And here. Right, which would be um, yeah. not, not exactly off the small path. More with the little, pool. Exactly, off. more off the pool. Yeah. Um, so we're sitting right here right now. Um, so it would be a little uh, to the south of that. What I also want to point out is this 
this road right now currently goes to somewhere, <coughs> I guess, around here. But this, uh, the project proposes a bus loop that will take the bus traffic around the back and then out this way. And this loop here would then be only for um, parent pickup and drop off and things like that. So it would ease the traffic flow a little bit as well and increase safety um, more importantly than anything. The last proposal, last bond that went out had the addition of a gym over here. The thinking of having the gym on this end is, um, as you'll see in a bit, moving the library toward the front, having the auditorium here, um, the current gym here, you have the cafeterias, the pool, and putting this gym, keeps all the, the highly accessed sort of community spaces all really on this end of the building, on the ground floor. Um, so there's the greater potential to allow access to those things without granting access to the entire building. Um, versus having it on this end, you know, it's a separate entrance and then uh, you know, separate from getting to the rest of those public areas. There's a, a question that comes to mind, I'm sure some of you are thinking about it now, well what about that bank right there? And how stable is the ground here? Um, based on, on what little bit of sort of investigating into that that's been done to this, to this point, that doesn't, that's not a concern for the architects um, that are looking at it right now. However, in, in the 35 million, there's a few hundred thousand, I think 360,000 is what comes to mind, for really securing that bank. Maybe it takes that, maybe it takes a little bit more, that's where some of those contingencies come in and that $7 million of soft costs. Um, but clearly, making sure that this bank is stable and will be stable for a long time is an important part of all of this happening in the back. Good on the aerial. The next one just sort of zooms in a little bit more on the footprint. Uh, so this would, this shows keeping the entry where it is, some significant redesign to the entry, but not relocating the front main entry of the building. However, uh, it does mean uh, changing the entry where the buses are. So the, bu the, bu the students would get off the buses and enter in this back hallway um, to come in the building. So you have, in the morning in particular, a lot of students who drive or get dropped off with some flow here, and those busing students uh, getting dropped off here with some flow there. You can see this area here is um, intended for drop off um, of different deliveries for custodial uh, equipment needs, um, but also for some of the design technology needs as well. And you'll see when we get into the footprint that the design technology has moved from really this area of the building, upstairs and downstairs, uh, to this back area where the library is currently located. I know the library move last time around was really controversial in part because of what was perceived to be the cost. The driving cost in moving the custodial, custodial area to the back was including the movement of all the utilities that enter the front of the building. If you had to change where all the utilities come into the building, that's a big cost. In this move of the library, the utilities stay. It's just the custodial space and the design tech space that gets relocated. We've already, uh, the committee feels strongly already that the, the, t the metal uh, space upstairs has to come downstairs just for safety reasons and ventilation and, uh, and everything else. So since that has to move, and since basically the library would need to be gutted anyway, the added cost to relocate the library in those shop spaces is pretty minimal. So given that it's a minimal cost differential, putting the library where, where we want it, which would be more in the front, seemed to make a lot of good sense. And you'll see that on the floor plan. And contrary to last time, this does not call for any changes to the tech ed program. It gives them a new safe space, gets the metal shop off the second floor, keeps the, Matt Brown was part of the committee for this, so his input was there. We are not making any changes to programming, we're just giving them a common sense space. And I think square footage wise, they stay the same and maybe it's even a little bit bigger. I think it's, and uh, it's better. It won't it's, have walls and Exactly, it's designed a lot better. So it's, it's <coughs> more space, or at least the same, and much better use of the space that they'll have. A neat fact is that he worked with his students in his CAD class to give a mock-up of the design of how he would like it on the first floor to the architect who put it into this plan. Pretty neat. The chips 
get into the chip plant. In the back. Yeah, so mm -hmm. I think that dot there. This yeah. is the wood chip plant right now, right? Okay. So I guess this is actually, sorry, this is where the kids would go in as they're getting off the buses. So the pool entrance is where that that semicircular lobby is on the gym? Right here, yeah, I think okay. so. And we'll, we'll get into a little bit more of the details of what this space would house, because there, there are a couple of other things in here as well. There, there's a couple of locker rooms, there's some office space, maybe some storage, as well as sort of a, you know, a nice entryway here for this, uh, this other gymnasium. So theoretically, if the only need was for this gym space, everything else could be locked off and folks can just get in and use that space. If you've been to Virgins, it's not unlike their sort of concept over there. Question about parking, like where folks would be able to park to access this gym. You know, if they had to park out here and walk around, you know, some of those things would still need to get figured out. You have to walk at Virgins. A little bit, get, yeah. Yeah, to get, unless you get that side spot. Right. Um, a couple of other things that are that show up pretty well here. So right now, so this is the large calf, small calf, and the kitchens in between. And we'll talk about a couple of really one small thing in the kitchen that would happen. Um, right now, there's a few. I think there's picnic tables out here, and I don't think there's any picnic tables out here. What we hear is the picnic tables here, especially on a nice day like today, really, really um, highly sought after space for kids during lunchtime. So the idea here is, you know, add some windows to this to really get more light into that small calf and make this a more intentional outdoor eating space um, and, and a little bit more pleasurable of a place to be. And then to do the same off the large calf off the front. Um, so kids already are able to go outside and have their lunch in, in, in particular off the small calf. So this doesn't increase any risk or anything more than what is currently happening. We're actually giving them somewhere to go. Right. It's just a, a space that's actually designed for the use that it's getting now instead of it just sort of happening to get used that way. And, and again, those are, end up being relatively minimal costs compared to the scope of the project. Um, and you'll see the front, you, you know, a lot, of more, a lot more plantings um, trying to soften the face of the building. And there are a lot of other things that you'll see on a slide later on that show some attempts to soften um, that face to give it less of a brick appearance and more sort of glass and landscaped and, and a little more curb appeal, which um, I think makes a, a big impact on everyone as they're entering the building. Any other questions on this space, on this slide before I move on to the next? So this is where it gets a little bit harder to make out all the details. Um, but sticking with the gym idea that we were just talking about, so this rectangular piece is uh, the new actual gym space. Right now it's currently sized in this proposal for a full regulation size high school um, basketball court and bleachers on both sides. <coughs> uh, so it would, it would <coughs> essentially duplicate. You can see square footage wise, it's pretty much the same as the current gym. Um, so that really gives two viable options for whatever events are going on, um, which I think will be advantageous. This is that sort of entryway. And these gray areas are how it just sort of attaches to the building. <coughs> these are locker rooms right here. So right now, anyone that's in the pool comes out of the pool across the hall and so this is the the ladies locker room here and the men's locker room is down the hall so if you're going to the men's locker room you come out soaking wet from the pool and walk down the hall and go in to the men's locker room there are problems with that uh, as you can imagine wet feet wet floors water dripping places where you don't want water dripping um, and so this adds locker rooms here that double as locker rooms for the gym the new gym and for the pool. So people don't have to go out into any hallway. They go from the pool room into a locker room, get dried off, get changed. Um, individual showers versus gang showers, uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, I don't, kids just don't use gang showers anymore. Can't say that I really blame them. Uh, so fewer shower heads, but ideally showers that are accessed a little more regularly. 
This space over here is either storage or an office. Can you remember? And it's the print it's is too small. Athletic storage. Athletic storage, right? And there was going to be some office space in there with the locker rooms. There was going to the locker rooms could also serve as a um, referee changing room, which we mm -hmm. don't currently have. Um, and uh, was there space for our athletic uh, trainer? There wasn't one designated on okay. this. There might have been room for, to put somebody in there. And just to be clear, the addition of these locker rooms doesn't remove these locker rooms. So these would stay locker rooms. Um, or get redone. But re right. So one thing that's important, just as a blanket statement, there's a lot of rooms we're not going to talk about in depth, but important to know that all of the rooms will have a fit and finish upgrade. So new doors, new, maybe new flooring, maybe new walls, like some of that sort of thing. So they get sort of a, a makeover, but structurally, a lot of rooms don't have walls changing. So the real cost um, increases are driven by moving walls. If we move a wall from here to there, that's a big cost. New flooring, et cetera, relative to the scope of this project, not such a big cost. So even rooms we don't talk about, fit and finish upgrades are part of this. This is that outdoor space that we talked about. It'll be sort of between the small calf and the gym, sort of off this corner, make it a nice sort of courtyard eating area. Small calf, this is the one addition to the kitchen. So this space right here is the kitchen in between the two calves. Um, cold storage is an issue right now. There's insufficient cold storage space in the kitchen. So we would move some things around to be able to add cold storage here. Um, again, some fit and finish, uh, talking about opening up this service line. As you can see, it's pretty closed off right now. Um, on so both sides, yeah. On both sides. So this would be really just opening that up a bit. Uh, but really not a ton happening in here. If you remember from before, the idea was to move the kitchen to one side, I think, and make one much bigger calf. When you start thinking about what's involved in moving walls and all of the, um, you know, the gas supply, the electric, the ventilation, et cetera, for that kitchen, that was a big dollar figure. Um, and so the, the direction that the architects were given was meet our priorities in the least cost, of, in the most cost effective ways uh, that you can. Um, which is why, you know, the second elevator didn't make it as a really high priority on the list of all the things that we were talking about. So adding that second elevator, it's not a required thing by code. It certainly would be a good thing. Um, but as they were given their charge, they didn't include that because the charge was uh, meet the priorities at, you know, at the least cost possible. Uh, then you can see on this other side on the large calf, so that'd be just out those windows, having a similar eating space. And that more or less wraps up this end over here. This is the, where the library would be located. So this would be the library commons area. Uh, again, softening this, a lot more glass. Um, square footage wise, again, I think it, it stays pretty close to the same, but it's used a little differently. Off the end of this, we have a couple of uh, classrooms and breakout spaces. Uh, not unlike what we have now, which I think are pretty well utilized. So as, as the model shifts to more of a commons, a, a learning commons, um, there are students that may come in here for additional support and to have some additional, some extra space for that to take place. Uh, makes a lot of sense with the model that we're working with. I mentioned before that the utilities weren't moving. This little gray box here is where the utilities come in. So that would stay the case. Uh, they don't get moved to the back where the rest of the custodial and uh, design tech classes get moved. This is currently the nurse's space that would remain the nurse's space. These purple areas are currently bathrooms. They would remain bathrooms. But again, sort of fit and finish. Possibly some, some redesigning of interior non-load bearing walls in here just to, again, capitalize on, on the space that's there and, and better utilize it for the privacy needs and whatnot that they have in the nurse's office, but essentially the walls of the nurse's office would stay the same and uh, same for the bathrooms. I don't know if you've been in either of these bathrooms recently. They could use an upgrade. Yeah, 
hours. <laughs> They're due. They're long overdue. Uh, well, the walls only come up to like here, I think. <laughs> it's like, hi. Yeah. Um, you'll, you'll see some pictures here. So here's the lobby. There would be an added security feature, which is pretty standard practice in, in a lot of the schoolwork that the architects are doing now. So this is sort of the current front doors as they are. You would walk into those and you would walk into a space where you would need to then be buzzed into the office, sort of check out the office, do whatever business it is, or state whatever your business is, and then you'd be allowed from the office out. So right now, once you're buzzed in, you have full access to the entire school. This would get you into that sort of vestibule. From there, you would then be uh, allowed to access the rest of the school. When folks can actually get eyes on you and have a conversation with you and understand why it is that you're there, gives that first sort of assessment, is this somebody we should allow access in this building? Yeah? How is the, how are the tiers? It seems like that's opening the access up. How are the terraces going to work? I mean, aren't you just opening up? This here? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't, I mean, it doesn't work any differently than it does now. Um, in that kids are out in those spaces right now. And we could talk about, you know, some fencing out here if that was something we needed to do. Um, there are security measures we could put in place if we felt that was something that we had to do. But um, when students are out of this space, they're supervised by adults. Okay. Thanks. Um, and of course, those doors would be closed and locked when it's not lunchtime, or so you can't go in and out of them. Right. Exactly. Uh, another picture that you'll see in a little bit shows the school store being relocated here. Right now, I think the school store is in a closet somewhere. Yep. Um, not great real estate for a school store. Uh, so this gives that a little bit more prominent place and right here in the hub of the activity, um, which will do good for the programs that the funds that are generated there are benefiting. But also when you think about school spirit and the school store, I think there's, an, there's a, uh, a value add there as well. So once, once you are granted access and you're sort of in, um, either you come through the office or you're in the lobby here, there, this proposes relocating the stairs. So right now this is a really large um, space that is really, I would say, rarely used to capacity. Adding the stairwell here that would um, get students up to this second area, this is sort of the balcony right now, um, opens up this whole space here, which could become a conference room downstairs, which is much needed in this administrative office suite here. Um, this brings all three administrators into this space, uh, has a nice setup for the folks out in the front office, includes the conference room, so when, when those meetings are needed to be held, it's not a matter of squeezing into sort of a working office of one of the administrators, and it keeps the mail room here as well. Uh, so just a, a better use of this space. Um, and I would say improving the use of this square footage out here and creating additional footage by moving the staircase. It gets a staircase out in the open, too. Right. We were talking elevators before. Right now, I forget if it's the purple or the gray, but one of these two um, areas in this um, design is where the elevator would be located. So move from here across the hall to that space. And again, whether or not that ends up happening gets fleshed out in the design phase. Uh, but that is still the one elevator, whether it's located here or across the hall, is the one elevator that's in this design right now. All right, moving to the auditorium. So a few things happening here. The, the proposal right now is uh, to try to get better use of this rear space of the auditorium. Um, right now this is very underused space. Um, on a regular basis, certainly when there's an event. Um, the events here are very popular and the seats fill pretty quickly and oftentimes a lot of folding chairs are put in this area just to add some seats. So we certainly can't have fewer seats for those events. However, this space is not used very often and we have some other needs with our choir and band that this space 
might be able to help with. So putting some retractable seats here um, could allow this space to be used for events when it's needed for the whole auditorium, but also they could go, um, they sort of retract back into the wall. Not unlike, we have a couple of schools, or at least one, that has retractable cafeteria tables. So they sort of open the doors and they pull them out and the tables fold out and kids have lunch there, time to, uh, for lunch to get picked up. They fold back in and they are stored neatly um, for those multi-purpose areas. So I'm envisioning something like that here where pretty easily the chairs kind of fold back into the wall when they're not needed and when they're needed they come back out. Town so, Hall Theater has that same stuff. Okay, right. <clears throat> so just giving some flexibility to the use of this space. Um, this proposal also has the addition of uh, sort of a folding wall here to really make this a separate room from the rest of the auditorium, which again I think helps with the flexibility. I thought those were retractable doors that we already have but we don't use so because they're broken or something? Because yeah. the pockets are there for yeah. the doors but the doors are not there any longer. Right. So this mean, this would, uh, there's money in here to Replace it all if it needs to. You know, again, it's hard to know until you really get into it if you can buy just the doors to use with the pockets we have, or since the place is going to get sort of redone anyway, do you just go with different pockets? But there's money in here to, to take care of that. Um, so, also new seats here, and a lot of upgrades. So, um, structural upgrades to the stage, as well as uh, sound equipment, lighting equipment, etc some of which has happened pretty recently, so we'd have to, in the design phase, really uh, flesh out what do we need or what have we upgraded recently enough that we can use um, and do that sort of work in that design phase. Kind of a lot going on over here. Uh, talking about accessibility, this, this area is somewhat of an accessibility nightmare right now. Um, this is the band choir room right now, and um, students enter pretty much, typically I think through here from the hallway door, but there's also a secondary access on the other end. Um, but this, if you've been in there, it's simply, it's a pit basically with stairs going up that uh, I think folding chairs are put on um, for the band. So accessibility is a real challenge there because there's no ramp anywhere, there's no lift, there's no way uh, for someone with accessibility needs to get up and down in that space. So this proposes bringing the floor up to the same level in this space. And it would be the same level as where students enter from the hallway here. Um, and because of the volume that would be lost, uh, and volume plays an important role in the acoustics for a band and for, chor for a chorus, we would take the, the ceiling out, which would be the floor of the space above, and recapture that volume that way. These spaces uh, would be similar in their use now, so there's several breakout spaces here for lessons and whatnot. Um, there, would be there would be space that would remain there but be made accessible for those lessons. Uh, so these are bathrooms here. Um, again, fit and finish, but that's it. This is currently um, a ramp, but the ramp doesn't really meet what is, I think, considered code now. It's a little too steep, I think, so um, this proposal would um, extend this ramp a bit longer so that the grade wouldn't be quite so steep. And that more or less, I think, covers the auditorium, unless somebody remembers something that I've forgotten. Just that when they make the volume taller in the music room, they actually have to remove the ceiling and the bar joists and the slab up above. Yeah, so it's a, it's <clears throat> a fairly significant project. Right. Yeah. All right, let's go across the hall to here. And I, I get, I have a hard time remembering sometimes. I think the gray is custodial. Yep. So again, that, that's currently located over in this neck of the woods. So that would move custodial over this way. Um, all of this green space is design tech. So you have uh, sorry, your metal shop, your wood shop, you have your CAD, um, and I think in, on top of that there's sort of a, a project space. So I think, and I forget if it's metal, wood, or wood, metal, and then you have CAD, and then a project space. 
So um, <laughs> not unlike in the previous proposal, um, there was kind of a maker space. Same concept could be there, could be a place where if, if a student's in the middle of a project for any one of those classes and they need a place to just sort of put it while the next cat classes are coming through, it could also serve that purpose. Um, but this whole area is for that work. And then the purple is IT. So right now, the I think the servers and the space for the IT folks, this is where not just the Mount Abe IT, but uh, Addison Northeast IT, uh, this is their home base. And they're currently located right here, so it would simply be a matter of moving them across the hall. As we're, as we're redoing lighting and everything else that comes along with the, the fit and finish everywhere, should there need to be infrastructure upgrades with the, uh, with the wiring and everything else, we'd also be looking to do that. Again, I think there's been some recent work done on that. We're not gonna redo something that doesn't need to be redone. But while we have all the ceiling tiles down, changing lighting and everything else, that's the time to run new wire and sort of look ahead with what is sort of the current standard and try to project out as far as we can. Because the less, less often we have to replace these things, the better, because the labor involved in pulling ceiling tiles down and running cable and everything else is, I think, the lion's share of the cost of doing that work. Questions about that area? If you remember from that bus loop in the back, this would be, this is that delivery area. So whether it's custodial uh, deliveries or design tech deliveries, everything come in and out this door in the back. A lot easier than having to lug whatever they're lugging right now upstairs to the metal shop. Through the windows. Or through the windows. <laughs> or the ventilation right now that I think pumps out the window. So there's sort of this ugly boarded up kind of looking window right in the front entrance of the building. Where's the student entrance back there? For the buses? Uh, is, over. is it this one? I think it's there. Right here, maybe? Yeah. yeah. So you have this student entrance, which sort of funnels kids um, into this end of the building, and then the front entrance here. So they both lead to sort of this main corridor around the front office and gym. So now moving over to this area, which is somewhat known as the middle school um, wing, although there's more than just middle school there. Uh, the attempt here was to preserve, and, and really the, another sort of big picture uh, piece to this is this project doesn't reduce the number of classrooms from what they are currently. The previous bond proposal did reduce the number of classrooms and there was talk of teachers having office space but sort of working in sort of mobile classrooms in that a teacher didn't have a classroom but they would go to a room that became their classroom when they were instructing. Um, doesn't really fit with sort of the, the model now, and certainly wasn't a very popular idea with teachers even then, I don't think. Um, so teachers are pretty happy to have their space, and when I think about public record and various resources that teachers post on their wall that's specific to, the, to their content and the material they're teaching, um, you couldn't do that if you if every time you went into the classroom you had to post your stuff and or and then you left you had to take your own stuff down um, isn't really conducive to what I think is is current practice so I'm pretty happy and I think many others are that the number of classrooms stays the same yeah, that was really important to a lot of folks here and especially I think the culture that we're trying to create where that classroom community is really the most important kind of sacred space and so that really furthers a lot of our programming that has adults and students working flexibly together during you know one hour chunks in the middle of the day where all hands are on deck and all need their own space and so this really reflects kind of our values and our programming so with that in mind as we head into these classrooms uh, we'll start around the perimeter and then work our way in so currently there are three seventh grade middle school teams Right, and three eighth grade middle school teams? Two and two. Two and two. two, and two. Um, oh, but they're three person teams, right. So you can see there's sort of a, a cluster of three classrooms here, cluster of three, cluster of three, cluster of three. That clustering supports the middle school team model that they currently have. Um, and that's why you sort of see those different shades of uh, different colors for that clustering. These two areas right here are science classrooms. These are a little bit bigger um, than what our current science classrooms would be in that area. 
and they have this added storage space attached to them. So what this would allow for is a portion of this space to be sort of more like lecture kind of classroom space and for the other portion of it to be more lab space. So it creates a multi-purpose space here and then duplicates that there with storage for various things off the end. Um, this is currently, so this, this is the art room. Right now the art room is about half that size and this allows for proper storage and space needed for um, what is uh, the typical design for uh, art classrooms right now. This is a guidance office so that the middle school uh, designated guidance person would have a space down in around these classrooms. Um, and then there are a few other spaces. I think these are these small breakout spaces. Mm -hmm. And these are also breakout spaces. So one of the, as we get into the classrooms, I think the it's either the first or second priority. So the gym was first or second, and um, natural light was the other. I can't remember which came first, but they were the, the top two priorities for sure. So to capitalize on that, obviously we have these classrooms that are exterior, so getting natural light in there is not a problem. We do have this little courtyard area, uh, which we would certainly, as we get into the design phase and we see how the numbers are shaping up, that could use a little beautification itself. It's not the most attractive thing to be looking out onto right now, but at least it lets in natural light. So, and, and part of the reason that courtyard is here is this is the new addition, and by new, I think it's 15 years or so ago that it was done. Some of you may remember better than, than I on that. But this, that sort of created this space in between, and that allowed for this courtyard to happen. So this art classroom would have light coming in from the courtyard, and these science classrooms would have light coming in from the courtyard, as would these little breakout spaces. The guidance office wouldn't have natural light coming from there. Obviously, these storage closets wouldn't, but that's not too big a deal. Um, nor would these little breakout spaces. The idea being those breakout spaces aren't necessarily spaces where kids will be all day long every day. Um, but from time to time there would be kids there and um, there would be a lot of glass along the hallways which helps to bring in more light into those spaces and makes it feel less confined than if it were just solid walls. Um, similarly with these spaces, you know, you can see here that there's no exterior window, but trying to, to really bring some um, some light in through the hallway by adding some glass to this corner. Are those bathrooms in the white up by the pink? Yeah, I think these are currently bathrooms, okay. um, and they would remain bathrooms, but again, fit and finish upgrades would likely be a part of that. This is a bit newer, so I don't know. We'd have to see again as things go if they need fit and finish um, upgrades or not. They're certainly in less need than most of the other bathrooms. Um, that would just have to be an assessment that we kind of take a look at. How do people access that courtyard? Does it get accessed? It doesn't. Um, it, right now it's really kind of just filled in with gravel and has a lot of weeds growing. I mean, it's not, it's not a very large space either. It's maybe three of these tables put together. Does it have doors currently or is, are they just There is windows? a door out to it, but it's locked and no one ever okay. goes out there. But for maintenance purposes, like if there were plantings or something out there, it's, it can be accessed and maintained for that purpose, but not really a space that would probably be useful for kids to go out into or any, any sort of instruction to happen. But it would be nice to make it at least a little more pleasing rather than looking at a bed of gravel, looking at some plantings or something. Could be a place for uh, outdoor sculpture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. But it's right on the other side of the art room, and so the art teacher had her eye on that for sure. Oh yeah, <laughs> she's already shared some ideas with me. <laughs> okay, I think that covers the ground floor. Anybody from the committee remember something that I missed? Or any questions about what we've talked about? And again, I mean, it, there's quite a lot there. So what I recall, this is about $5 million. This is a million, a couple million. Um, so just those two things, there's 25% of the project total. Then you throw another 25% of the soft costs, we're already at 
half of the project that we're talking about. All right, let's go upstairs. So again, here's the, the addition of the gym. And there's the upstairs of the pool, so that you can see there's a lot of um, space here that just the second story of what is downstairs. Um, if we start on this end, so let's see, right now, to get to these classrooms, you have to walk through these classrooms. I was, I was touring the schools today. I made it out to all the schools and just about every classroom. And so I poked my head into this room and said, hey, happy first day, how's everything going? Then, okay, don't mind me, I'm just gonna keep going into the next room <laughs> and say the same thing and I'll be walking right back through your instruction again. It's about the most awkward thing you can experience in a school. Next to the gang showers. I guess if I'm thinking about it from the <laughs> perspective, like gang showers, number one, most awkward. Number two, walking through a classroom because it's the only way to get to where you're going. Um, so this takes care of that. So this sort of slides these out a little bit and uh, takes some space out to create this corridor so that you can enter these classrooms without having to go through these classrooms. Um, now exactly what these, so these blue spaces, um, whether they're math or social studies or whatnot, is totally flexible. Uh, so we won't get into those. The dark blue we'll talk about because those are specifically designed for science. Uh, but the others are pretty much whatever the need may be. Um, that's really the big redesign over here. What I do also want to point out is right now we lose a lot of natural light because these sort of window wells at the end of the hallways have been walled off and made into offices. Those would come down and that would bring that light from the exterior into the hallway. So. So we bring more light into the hallways. So for those interior rooms where we can't get the natural light in, we at least have more light in the hallways that we can bring in through the glass that would be looking out into the halls. Um, in addition, these interior classrooms where there are no um, exterior walls, where there's, so there can't be windows, there are skylights. Uh, so if you remember in the first project, the, the idea was to cut really big um, sort of light wells into the second story to bring light from the upstairs into the downstairs to get light into those interior rooms downstairs. That came with a really big price tag and it also ate up a lot of square footage, which is why we, I think, had to have fewer classrooms um, to make it all work. Getting natural light into classrooms on the second story, no big deal. You put a skylight or two in those rooms that don't have the exterior walls, and you can flood those rooms with natural light. Um, the architects were saying in some of the schools they've done this, um, the amount of light that that brings in is just tremendous. Um, so it accomplishes that priority really well. Um, so that sort of takes care of this area. These are, um, I think these, are this color because they would be art spaces. Um, these are currently art spaces. They would stay as they are currently um, in use, in part because I think there's there's some equipment up there that's pretty specific to it. That, yeah, so having the, keeping the kiln there and everything that's set up for the kiln there makes sense. But again, fit and finish upgrades. Coming into this area, so this right now is sort of the, the teacher's area where the, uh, they have lunch, the faculty bathrooms and things are here. It would stay for that same purpose. Uh, but again, fit and finish upgrades to that space. Um, again, these could be whatever classroom space they need to be. Right now, this is the current metal shop. Um, right here is that window I was talking about that's not so attractive. Um, and this sort of loops around right now for, um, I think CAD is here. Um, and there's another sort of design yeah. shop in here. So that's a new corridor there as well, right? Mm -hmm. Right now yes, the faculty yep. space backs up to those metal shop rooms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this creates a little bit of space there as well to um, alleviate some of that. And I think, again, these are, is that breakout space? Uh, bathrooms right now. This is currently bathrooms, okay. The two small, yeah, on the sides. Okay, so the bathroom here, the bathroom here. Mm -hmm. Maybe that was the breakout space. I can't quite recall what that was. 
All right, coming up this way. So this is currently uh, the wrestling room and there are adjacent locker rooms to the wrestling room. If you remember the wrestling room, it's just terrible right now. Uh, I can't describe it any other way. It's, um, it's just, it's not a great space. It's, um, yeah, really everything about it just doesn't work well. Uh, it's too small, it's too dark, it's just in need of a lot of work. Um, and the locker rooms that are adjacent to it currently are equally as bad. So what this proposes is, uh, I think, making the wrestling room a bit bigger so that an actual regulation mat can fit. Right now they have to, I think, cut the mat so that it fits in the space. Chris, you I say there's probably mat. one section they just don't put, because it comes, there are sections that roll up, so I think there's one section they don't put down. But they can't fit a but regulation fit mat the in the space right now. So that would make that space more conducive to wrestling. But also, I think currently there's no real storage for the mats, which is why the mats, once they go down in the fall, they stay, they stay down. down all winter into the spring sometime. Um, not because the wrestling unit for PE goes all winter long, but because there's nowhere to put the mats. So um, rather than keep locker rooms up here, uh, with the addition of the locker rooms downstairs, so we have sort of a, it's sort of a net zero impact on the number of locker rooms. It's just there are four locker rooms downstairs in this proposal, and the locker rooms upstairs go away. But what that does is it creates more storage area upstairs for wrestling mats and other things that are needed. Um, you know, it could be other storage for physical activity, for PE stuff. Yeah, there was talk of putting a multi-purpose floor down, because if you have space to store the mats, you can do other stuff in that space. Um, so it would really open things up for the PE department. <clears throat> and this red is the, the upstairs of the elevator that we talked about being possibly located here, or again, it could be across the hall where it is now. Um, these would be gender neutral bathrooms, so that's something that, that is very important to keep in mind um, now as we're building sort of a, a school moving forward. Um, we have to consider gender, gender neutral bathrooms uh, in addition to the gender specific rooms that we have. Um, one thing I forgot to mention, over here you can see um, this proposal has some added windows into the pool area, which again adds some, um, some light into the hallways, um, adds sort of a nice feature to the pool, um, and then that same idea carries forward here to the gym. Whether they end up being up high so kids aren't peering down into the area and using it as sort of a, <laughs> a spectacle, um, or they're brought down low, who knows. But just sort of getting a little bit more light flowing um, through and among the rooms. So this is, is the current balcony as it is now and would be continued to be used that way. But this is the staircase that would be added to the lobby that would be the way for kids to get upstairs in addition to the elevator. And all those other stairs, so there's a stairway at the end here, there's a stairway over here, stairway here, those would stay as well. I think the, the last proposal had some of those stairwells moving, which again was costly. So the stairwells stay where they are um, in those other areas. We move this staircase from over here and you know figure out where the elevator makes the most sense. And those are the ways that kids would be able to access the second floor. And I'm assuming if we, if the, if the, the decision was to put another elevator in, it would be somewhere on this end um, or built in somewhere, but to get access upstairs from over here via elevator um, rather than having the one elevator just be on this end. Patrick, what's the room that's directly over the band room? This one? Yes. So that wouldn't be a room? Um, that would actually be the band room from downstairs. Right, so that's... Um, that's the ceiling that would go away. Right, so that's the, the ceiling that would go away. So this would be actually open to the band room downstairs. And that's what that little note actually says. What's that, sorry? That's what that little note actually says. You can't oh, okay. It says open <laughs> yeah. to band room. <laughs> Wait, are you having trouble reading that, Alice? Yeah. Is that? yeah. Um, <laughs> um, 
coming back here as we kind of work our way across. So this would be, uh, and currently is much of it, sort of a guidance suite. So kids would come in uh, to this sort of office space and then we would have individual uh, rooms for whether guidance counselor offices or sort of small group rooms. And there would be a, uh, also a conference room here. So just like downstairs, this is where the, the, the stairwell currently is. Um, it created an office space or a conference room downstairs and this would create a conference room upstairs. So as guidance counselors are meeting with families and kids, uh, they have some privacy to do that and they have a space sufficient enough for people to join them in that conversation. I think that's more or less what this entire blue space is for. Continuing over this way, so this is the planetarium now. It would remain the planetarium. Again, fit and finished, but it would stay as a planetarium. Um, and again, what these classrooms end up being, maybe they stay the same as they are. Maybe there's some reshuffling, but they're sort of more your generic classroom space. This is, I think, actually a special education space. Um, and I don't recall what that one is. Anybody remember what that space was? Just a, a classroom, right? I think it's recaptured space for the space lost for the band ceiling. Oh, right, yes. So that space sort of goes across to here. Um, which I think right now is maybe CSAC offices. Is that right, Jess? Um, right now, no. The CSAC offices are in with guidance right now. So that okay. space right there is the special education space. Okay. Um, this darker blue, at which you see over here as well, is specifically science labs. So that same concept of this in this larger space, a portion of it being more classroom oriented and a portion of it being lab oriented. But again, modern day lab versus current um, lab. And each of these rooms has their storage off to the, um, sort of off to the side. Uh, and again, any of these interiors, so these all have exterior walls, so getting natural light in is no problem. This one does not, so there'd be um, a, a light or a skylight. Same as downstairs, these would be breakout spaces, and these would be science classrooms, and then uh, whatever classroom space was needed here. Another piece, if you notice downstairs, there's a really carving out the space for middle school teams. I mean, I think I envision that, that top space along with the, the mirrored science classrooms. Um, our ninth grade teams are also a three-person team, so it's really lovely that it like, enhances exactly what, what we're trying to do anyway. Mm -hmm. Questions about upstairs? All right, get a, a few different perspectives. So here you can see, so that's the addition of the um, second gym. Um, with, all right, Steve, you're gonna help me with this again. Clear story. Clear story. Again, as a way to get light into the gym without the glare of the light interfering with whatever event's going on in there. Um, also offers a nice sort of aesthetic as you're looking at the facility through that, from this perspective. You can see here a lot more glass, really softening um, the space here. I think this is currently the front entrance. And right now, this is the big sculpture that basically makes it so there can't be any windows there. So this is all new windows. So this is the guidance space up above. This is the administrative offices down below. Um, really makes a big difference, I think, in terms of getting natural light into these spaces. This would be the windows above the lobby. Staircase would be sort of right here. And then we move into classrooms along the top, library here, and then coming over to the cafeteria on the end. You can see the different windows compared to what you have here. Definitely, yeah. A lot more money in this proposal for windows, possibly replacing, so a lot of the classrooms in particular upstairs have windows, but they're really narrow windows, um, which don't allow as much light to come in. So there's a lot of money in here for window work and really looking to maximize the amount of natural light that comes in. A lot yep. of efficiency, I think, gained from improving the windows as well because there's a lot, we have a lot of heat loss that is happening from really failing windows throughout the building. 
And to the west, on the back side of this, I mean, this building has million dollar views with <laughs> these tiny windows that are not really taking advantage of them. So uh, you can see from this perspective a lot of the skylights along the top. And there's another better look on, at, the, at what some of those skylights would be. But you can see they're sort of domed uh, or uh, have this sort of pyramid shape to them so that the snow stays off and um, can function really well. A little different look to the, you get a, a picture of the gym in the back and the skylights really well, but also just a sense of what the front of the building could look like. Again, right now, this is that big sculpture that blocks um, most of where these windows would be. Uh, just really softens that front entrance a lot. You can see over here the outdoor eating area, more windows with some doors here for the cafeteria. Really changes that Changes sort of curb appeal, feel. first impressions um, as people are entering the building. Just another angle, the same thing. So here's the staircase that we were talking about. So this is the front door as we walk in now. And you just sort of come around and up the staircase to get upstairs. There's the school store that we were talking about. Really prominent um, location. And here's the entrance to the library. Again, nice uh, sort of open, airy, centrally located. Visible as well. There's a lot of safety consideration that goes into this plan, thinking librarian can see out into the, lo the lobby, administration can see out into the lobby in the library. There's just a lot of transparency in me. We didn't really talk about that. And all the glass, too, would have right. curtains that could, shades that could drop if there's that much glass there. So right now, until recently, this was a solid brick wall. Fairly recently, there was a door added here, which has a very narrow window in it. And that's the only view from the office into the lobby. This is also a solid brick wall. This is mostly brick, unless the doors are open, that's very solid. So we've created this really nice, solid, invisible place for kids to be. <laughs> unless you happen to be walking in the front door. So this proposal puts a lot of glass here, so you have some eyes from the library to the lobby. It opens this brick wall up with a lot of glass, so you have eyes from the um, administrative offices into the lobby. Uh, just much better supervision of that area. And it, opens, it, it calls, this concept calls for glass in the front of the gym as well, the current gym. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that opens it up so you can see what's going on in there. So I just remembered, I forgot to mention that when Jess was talking about being able to see from the administrative offices now out into the lobby. And these are just some different perspectives. So this is standing on the landing here looking up. And this is sort of a bird's eye view of what is currently the balcony. And then the stairs coming down. There's the numbers. So these are a few of the different options that we're looking at. So the do nothing was simply um, code, like bringing things up to code. And you can see in 2013, that was a pretty hefty figure. Um, and there were a couple of other different options that were discussed at the time, but the one that went out for a bond vote was this $32.6 million project. Um, here's the option four, which were, is what they're calling this most recent. And you can see that it's 36.6, and the proposal is for a $35 million bond. The idea isn't that we cut a million and a half dollars out. The idea is, in the with the money we have in the budget right now, to knock off a couple of the items that are in here to be able to realize the scope of this entire project um, as much as we can with the money in the budget now, and then the rest coming from that 35. So even though the bond is less, the idea would be that we would accomplish everything that you saw conceptually here. Yes, I think that's yeah, in, the, it's in the packet now. Yeah. So there's a little bit of work just to define what that million dollars is going to be towards. Yes. 
And what's kind of tricky right now is without knowing if the bond's going to happen or not, you know, if, if we knew the bond was happening, that would give a little bit more information about what should we spend that money on in the meantime. And if we knew the bond wasn't happening, that might shift our thinking as to where we might allocate those funds. So we're, we're in sort of a funny place right now. One of the areas which is a big ticket item is furniture. So we know whether the bond happens or doesn't happen, we need to replace some of the furniture in this building because a lot of it is original to the building. Um, we have kids getting cut on tables. We have lockers that are doing damage to backpacks and coats and things like that. Um, some of those things have to happen. So we know for sure furniture upgrades um, are going to happen this year. I don't know exactly when we anticipate. Are, During they, one of the breaks, the order probably. will go in at the end of September, and they will get here around the holiday break when everyone is out of the school. They'll be able to come in. So that's, you know, I think there's probably somewhere around a half a million dollars in this 36 and a half million dollars for furniture. So that immediately brings that 36.6 down somewhere around 36. And there's some other things that we can tackle like that. So where we know it's safe, we're moving forward with um, spending the money now to take care of some of these things. Um, and as we get a, a better sense of whether this is going to happen or not, we can take additional steps. I think there's some money in here to address the bus barn, so we're looking at maybe doing some work at the bus barn, um, which can take some money out of here. So just trying to, to be smart with how that money is being spent in anticipation of hopefully even passing a bond. And if the bond doesn't pass, we still have some needs that are being taken care of. And I'm happy to go into a lot of these numbers. I think there's maybe one other slide of numbers, much smaller in size, but not necessarily in, in amount. Uh, but this is that breakdown that you were asking about before, Carol. So there's the gym, 5139000 um, on down through, which again, I think this is also in your packet. It, it actually came in an email, so people might not have it in their agenda packet, but it came in an email last before the retreat last week, it came, everybody okay. should have it, that pre this presentation in their email. If you don't have it, email me. I'll send you a copy. Can you send me one? Sure. Yeah. I think the important thing to point out on the slide before is that um, the way this estimate was broken out, a lot of them had to do with uh, categorizing work according to the priorities list that the renovation committee put together. So I think they could sort of see what each of those priorities roughly um, cost. I mean, it's maybe not a, a perfect match to everything because it's difficult to do that, but um, I think the committee did have the ability from looking at it to see what each of those priorities was in kind of a more lump sum. Yeah, I have to say, um, Engelbert and Doran Whittier were great in terms of really trying to help present to the committee um, a design that met the, the priorities at sort of the least amount of cost possible, but also just sort of presenting the information in a way that we could link priorities and costs, and if you did this or didn't do that, um, at, so that if the committee wanted to, to propose to me something less than the full scope of the project, that the committee had what it needed to say, okay, well, let's take this off or that off and bring it down by that much and let's move forward with this much of a bond. Um, so it was set up well to do that. In the end, and, and, and I agree with their, with their recommendation, the committee said, basically, it doesn't ever get cheaper to do this work. Let's, Let's do it now, let's get it all done, um, and take care of the needs of the building. And that's why I really wanted to capture in my proposal to you some of the factors that the committee was wrestling with in terms of the cost of not doing the work. You know, it's, it's evident the cost of doing the work. Sometimes what's missed or, or lost is the cost of not doing work. Um, and so that was sort of the perspective I brought to the proposal. What would be the thing? 
bond? Uh, this, so these figures have a 30-year bond. Just given the, the amount of the bond, that 30-year that figure makes it a little bit more palatable each year in terms of the bond payment. Um, and as I said in, the, in my recommendation, based on um, what we're looking at for that $35 million over 30 years, the million dollars that we have in the budget now covers about 45% of what the principal and interest payment would be each year. You know, so you could essentially say that really 55% of that $35 million is what we're saying has an impact on taxes. And in some ways, that 55% of $35 million is what we're comparing to $32.6 million from last time around in terms of what's the cost really going to be uh, above what we're already paying in taxes. Because last time around, there wasn't any money in the budget to be applied to principal and interest. Now we have a million dollar head start on where we were last time around. So yes, it's two and a half million dollars more than what was asked for last time. Um, but we're still in a way better position to be able to afford it than we were three or four years ago for 32.6. If they start in 2019, when do they end? Um, so there is one of these tiny lines up here somewhere um, is, I think they called it project compression or schedule compression, I think maybe, um, where there's some savings from finding ways to do the work a little more quickly. So I think they were saying probably two years, maybe two and a half. I think three was on the high side. But again, the, you know, they were talking about some of the things like just the oversight of the project is $60,000 a month for every month that they're here. So the fewer months that they're here, the more savings we're gonna realize. So anything we can do to shorten the window of time they need to be here, which is primarily driven by how much of this space can we grant them access to at one time, we can reduce that cost. And the new gym would be swing space, so we wouldn't have to rent portable classrooms and basically toss that money away as they put those classrooms away. We would have the gym to use as that. So as classrooms are being worked on, those classes would be relocated to the new gym and then as areas move around, so they'd be able to work year-round kind of. And also approaching the master schedule really early on and making sure that you know that's where some classroom sharing might happen or really making sure that we give as wide access to the building as possible mm -hmm. and disrupt learning as least as possible. Well also that's where a lot of this 11 months worth of design is going to come in because they're going to have to generate several phasing plans for you folks, you know, as you're moving through, so you understand what each of these different shuffles is right. going to be. Can we make that work, or do we have to How do the checkers yeah. work? And that can be one of the more difficult things to estimate, the cost, because if you're going to put classrooms in the gym with swing space, there are some costs involved, for sure. Still some fit up involved to do that, so. But um, not as much as. Right, not as much as a whole structure, or moving a whole structure in and out, or finding space somewhere else for kids to be temporarily. It'd be great. The kids would appreciate it if we could just take a couple years off of school. <laughs> uh, but I don't see that happening. Um, so I think this is the last. Yeah, this is the last slide. So these are just some of the additions or deletions uh, from the last time. So you can see a lot of the things we've talked about um, in here, and a couple of things we didn't talk about that are relatively minor in scope. Any other questions without getting too deep into the details? Allison. Well, I'd just like to reiterate that I really hope we can get a second elevator into this building, given the amount of um, softness around the bond in terms of, you know, we're not talking about fit and finishes just yet. So there are some things that could be moved around, I'm sure, to allocate the funds toward that second elevator. Um, I know St. Ambrose Church did a um, $250,000 renovation where they put in an elevator into the church and they renovated the bathrooms and they renovated the kitchen and they did it for $250,000. Um, I know this scope is bigger 
but um, they were able to do that. And I don't know, do you know how much it would cost? There's a, a rough estimate of how much it would cost to put in a second elevator. Did you ever get that? I would imagine. Between 250 and 500,000. Might yeah. be closer to 250, but. I had a lot to do probably with just where the building was going to go. Was it going to be outside, so you needed new outside walls, or whether you could do it inside, and what were the impacts it was going to have? The Middlebury one was, that was five, ten years ago, the high school. That was 150, 200,000. Yeah. I just think it's our responsibility as a board mm -hmm. to make sure that um, we make our school as universally accept, uh, accessible to not only our students but our community as well. And it's sort of interesting. So it's I mean just the phases of the project. So we're we're still in the concept phase, um, and and should this board decide to go forward with a bond in the fall and the bond passes, then we're into the design phase. Um, but in between, sort of where we are now, if if this board goes forward with it, then we need sort of that communications committee where we go out and talk about. The, the concepts and the cost and talk about just you know informing folks about just all the details around this but then should it pass and we're in the design phase I think there needs to be another representative group of perhaps it's from the SD board at that point because this board will be getting pretty close to, to dissolving um, but there has to be board representation I think in the design phase as we're as we're tossing because there's a lot of details they get ironed out um, and you know, certainly administrators and teachers and students and community members have a role, but I think board members for sure have a role in that design phase too as we're talking about exactly what happens and what goes where. So multiple opportunities along the way for um, lots of people to contribute to exactly what the finished product looks like. Well, and also at that point, I know you won't be getting another estimate before November, um, but you will be getting further updates during the design process. Mm -hmm. So at that point, you'll have a little more better information. You'll be more focused about what the design is and what the costs are, and you'll need to make some decisions based upon whatever those results are. Right, and so maybe we're pleasantly surprised when the design phase is over and it's going out to bid and we're getting bids back and we're seeing figures considerably lower than what were anticipated. Again, when you're, when you're sort of taking on a project of this size, you have to, you have to sort of assume the worst and, and hope for the best. And that's the figures you're seeing are sort of a not to exceed, just in case we run into lots of different things, this ought to be enough to be able to accomplish the concepts that are, that are there. Um, if we don't run into some things that we might run into, or if we see these bids coming back lower, you know, a couple percent is a lot of money on, on a project this big. So we, we can be pretty close and have it be a lot of dollars difference. Do you know of any financial help we could either get from the federal government or from the state? Is there anything out there? There's, there's nothing that comes to mind. There, there, there are certain groups that have some interest, like we might be able to work with some groups that are interested in supporting the arts and get some contributions toward the auditorium. So we might be able to piecemeal some things from various organizations. Um, but there's no state aid, and I'm not aware of any federal aid, or you, Howard. I don't think there's anything out there. It used to be the case that the state paid for, uh, you know, a portion of the, um, the construction costs, but it's been several years since that's been the case. Lots of regulations and no money. Bingo. Lots of regulations. The permitting. There was a figure that they threw out. I forget what it was, but just permitting and all the applications and all the paperwork that goes along with a, a project of this size. Just the dollars associated with that are pretty considerable. We could all renovate our house quite handsomely on what it costs for the permitting and all the stuff for this project. I I just wanted to say that you know the committee took its job seriously. No one was skipping about the room saying let's spend thirty five million dollars. It was how do we take care of the building. How do we give our students and our future students the best possible environment to be in and take care of the school in a way for the next 50 years where it's going to be able to meet those needs? And unfortunately, today everything comes with a million dollar price. And we, we looked at it and we said, what do we cut? 
and we said everything's a priority. The, the gym space is a priority. We're keeping the pool that the community wanted. We're, um, you know, uh, addressing the safety concerns and, and all that. And we, we kind of felt it would be irresponsible not to go ahead with this work because okay, we'll do this and this. Okay, well now you have a bond for 15 years, but in five years, you've got to go out for another bond to address what you didn't do the first time. So while we know it's a big dollar amount, we, uh, we believe in the work, we believe what it will bring to Mount A, to the students of Mount A, and, um, and build our future, make this a place where people want to move in. And it's hard to really put numbers on on that concept to to think about the impact the high school facility, the actual physical structure, has on drawing people to the community, um, and what that means for the grand list and ultimately the tax rate. Um, hard to really quantify, but it's real. Um, we had a gentleman from the Morrisville area, which uh, has People's Academy High School, that went through the same process. Um, and they put a lot of money into their facility. And they said, in the years that have followed, they're one of the, the few areas where they're seeing population growth outside of Chittenden County. Um, so it's, it's a little bit of sort of the field of dreams approach. If you build it, they will come. But there's evidence to suggest that there's some truth behind that. Um, you know, we, we have families that come and they're visiting schools and they're checking the place out and they're trying to decide where they want to sort of hunker down. And they First come and they see Mount Abe and, and they don't know necessarily what's happening inside the building, which is great stuff. The physical structure doesn't even come close to, represent, to re representing what's happening in the building. Mm -hmm. What they see is the building. And 20 minutes to the south, and they've got Middlebury Union High School. 15 minutes to the west, they've got Virgins, and 20 minutes to the north, they've got CBU. What about their what they see here would make them choose this location rather than 20 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes? And most people aren't going to go in depth. And they're they're going to go off. Oh well, the school's not very appealing, and that that is selling short all of the great things that are happening within these walls, all the hard work that our, our staff and our students are doing. So, um, And that's the piece for me too. I want, I want that for the students and the staff as well, not just for the people who might want to relocate here, although that's a great benefit. Um, but the building doesn't look like what's happening here. Right. And I, I, it I doesn't it look too. as valued as it is. In fact, some amazing programming and, programming and innovative work has come about in spite of some significant limitations. And that you mentioned the hidden curriculum too, the, it, the um, environment that the kids are in boosts. Well, there's, I mean, there's so much research about natural light, fresh air, and that effect on student learning, and so that often increases achievement, and never mind kind of the, what attitudes they absorb about or inferences they make about how much they're valued based on the surroundings that they are in. Yep. Do you have any more questions regarding the presentation and recommendation? Has there been anybody but me? <laughs> that is actually heard from the public as to what they feel about this after seeing something in the newspaper. I've actually heard from people, which actually I was pleased that people would call up and say, you know, I think what they were saying to me, of course, you know, is 35 million you must be getting. And I said, that will be the recommendation from the committee to the board, and they say, uh-uh, uh-uh, I've heard it's just too much. I think the emphasis on the different financial situation that we're currently mm -hmm. in, you know, with the money built into the budget and um, tax incentives from Act 46 and a lot of that, that really it's about 50% that will be new tax burden. Um, so we're 
we're in a prime place to actually accomplish our dreams without breaking the bank for taxpayers. See, in Bristol, uh, it hits us because we just got the new fire station. We've got to pay for that. And we're going through the, the water thing. And that's another expense for Bristol. And so I think that's probably why I have heard from people because they're saying, but we've got all these other things. And I've listened. Mm -hmm. And I, I have a daughter who's in 4-H, so I had the pleasure of living at Field Days all week, <laughs> um, which is prime opportunity for people to ask questions about what they're reading in the newspaper. And it's sort of the timing came out that the article came out sort of during that Field Days week, and I had lots of conversations with folks. And, um, and similarly, it was that, yeah, it's a lot of money. But the conversation shifted pretty quickly to, we've got to do something. Um, and that was an opportunity to talk about the cost of not doing something. Like, if we, if we can agree we're going to do some significant work here, which I don't think anybody disagrees is, is needed, um, we can debate what the work is and how much it should cost, but I don't think anybody disagrees we've got to do some serious work. Every month we wait costs tens of thousands of dollars. Tens and tens of thousands of dollars. So not acting is much more costly than determining what it is we're going to settle on something and get it going and get the project started. Because the more we wait, the more it's going to cost. Certainly the, the cost increase is going up at a rate greater than what salaries are going up at. So in terms of affordability, it's more affordable now than it will be in the future. You know, a 5% uh, cost increase, if that's true, that's more than the typical salary increases or folks on fixed incomes, that's more than what the percent increase they're getting on an annual basis. Um, so it only becomes more and more unaffordable the longer we wait to do something. And also, if the interest rates go up, you'll yeah. find that you're going to be putting more money in interest, and it's going to hurt the amount that we can use toward the yeah. renovation of the building. With a million dollars even in the budget now, you can't pick a particular project and finish it over the summertime. So the idea of having a bond to be able to do these things, even if I was able to take a million dollars from one year budget into June and then take another one from July 1st, you still couldn't accomplish these major things over a summertime period. It's just impossible. And as I said in my, my recommendation, a half percent increase in the interest rate on $35 million over 30 years is just shy, just shy of $3 million for a half percent. It adds up. Yeah, and it's pretty difficult to look through, the <clears throat> look through the program and the priorities and understand what you would cut out of it. Um, I know even in some of the items that were a lower priority, trying to accomplish the priority items acts like a domino in the building. Mm -hmm. We're not increasing the footprint of the building, so if you move tech ed downstairs, even though renovating the library or moving the library wasn't a priority, as high a priority, in order to find some place to put tech in, that almost had to happen. And so you look at those kind of dominoes in the program on top of the fact that just doing the code work is $12 million. Just was. Yeah. Three or four was years ago. Three or four years ago. Now they're telling us it would be around 17. And to just do the code work, just <clears throat> do the code work and put a new coat of paint on the place, now every all the programmatic issues that are, the building is having aren't solved. Right. And every time you try to solve one of those programmatic problems down the road, you've just, you have to tear out the code improvements you made. You, you're sort of throwing money away for correcting code problems without first adjusting the program. So it's a little difficult now with the amount of work that needs to be done to figure out how you actually pare it down to uh, make it efficient and cost effective. I can see why the committee in the end said, you know, we need to put this all out as a package. Mm -hmm. Sandy. So, you know, last week I saw the presentation and, you know, and I read the article and I think um, initial reaction will be a sticker shock. I think we'll see the number. Um, but I think it's important and it was brought to my attention to look at the minutes from your August 7th meeting. I think they're very detailed. They covered everything that was discussed here. 
and it's, it's done in a really thorough manner, talking about, I mean, part of me goes, if you don't invest in this multi-million dollar building, are we going to let it just fall apart and continue to do so? Um, I don't think anybody is, is proposing we do nothing or, you know, and then if you just do things in a piecemeal basis like the gym floor, right, which discovered all the pipe issues, which then discovered all the other problems, this building at some point is going to become even more expensive to fix. Um, and uh, there was something said at the board retreat that really hit me. First graders will be graduating when? In 2029? Right, that seems like ages from now, but really, you know, we look at first graders in elementary school. What are they going to come to when they come to this high school, you know, in seven or eight years if we don't do something significant to the building? You know, I mean, yes, we can sort of move along little by little, but I mean, I think it's really significant that we need to make an investment that will last for the next 30 years. This isn't like we're making this like every 10 years and we're doing major bonds and you know, investment in the building, we're saying we've waited a really long time, we've let the building honestly fall apart. We need to make a serious investment to get it where it needs to be to a good quality standard. And then hopefully that will last for the next 30 or whatever amount of years. And then when the next time comes the renovations and innovations that need to happen, they can decide then what they need to do. But I don't think we can just keep ignoring uh, the problems that are just right in your face. And the kids are suffering. I think the community is suffering, I think the kids are. I think the education at Mount Abe is excellent, but there's a definite impression that it is a, of a lower tier just because of the physical plan. You know, and that's not a very good thing for the kids. They notice it, you know, you hear it, you know, from them. They feel it. And they don't, they feel it and they don't feel pride like they should be. You know, I look at the track, my son loves to play track. I mean, to run track. But our, our track field, I mean, that's not even included in this. It's an embarrassment. They can't even hold a meet here at Mount Abe for the high school level because it's below quality. It's simply, um, they have middle school track meets, but they can't even hold a high school track meet. Um, there and then is course, some mm -hmm. athletic site improvements and repairs in this. Oh, there is some. Yeah. Which, which is good. But you know, I don't the think it's the rubberized track, but. <laughs> yeah, but the track program has suffered here. There's yeah. no doubt you have a hard time attracting coaches to even do basic field, you know, the field track, because I think we haven't invested in saying we value, you know, these types of programs, and so you're not gonna have someone commit themselves. It, it, it just all kind of sort of, I think, flows into another. So yeah, I definitely was impressed by the, the price tag, but if you really research it and you, and you look at it carefully and you see all the work was done and all the thought that went into it, I don't really see a lot of other choices. So I mean, that's why I'm in full support of it. And if I could just add something, when we had the previous bond and I had to sign off on some documents that the bond had passed, one of the questions was, did you have sufficient support in your budget from year to year to provide enough that this wasn't related to deferred maintenance? And at the time, I told the administration that I couldn't sign that a yes. And even though we spent considerable money in the last two to three years, you know, this is a 50-year-old building. It's not brand new. And if you don't recognize that, then something, you know, this is not going to get any better. It's just not. Okay. The committee believes in Mount Abe, and we want to see what's going on. We want to see Mount Abe shine. Motion on the floor is to approve the superintendent's recommendation for the bond project. You want to vote? Can I vote? Or do I stay out because I was on the committee? You're on this floor. You can vote. All right. All those in favor of approving the superintendent's recommendation for the bond project, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? I will vote. Would you like that noted in the minutes? Yes. Any abstentions? All right, the motion passes. Okay. Thank you. All right. Our next action is to uh, form a communications committee for the bond project. And we haven't really chatted about a charge since last week. We did sort of talk about it. Yeah. 
So I've been <laughs> scratching away. <laughs> um, I'm not sure how, I, I believe that uh, you, you mentioned last week there are many members of the current renovation committee that would be interested in serving on the, uh, the communications committee. That was definitely my sense from the, from the meetings. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I would agree. You would agree. So, um, and can you refresh my memory how many, um, <laughs> how many members were on the, the renovation? Eleven. Voting members. Yeah. Eleven voting members. So um, I can read you what I've written, and we can. I, I don't want to spend a ton of time wordsmithing it, but if there's some concept that you don't want in there, we can just scratch it out and kind of give a broad direction to the group and form it. Um, or we can take another route. It's up, it's up to you. What do you? Let's see. All right. So the charge would be to form a committee of not more than eight people, and we can have the letter sent to the chair, and I can appoint them as soon as, as soon as possible because we're running out of time to develop a plan to communicate the re renovation committee and superintendent's recommendations regarding the 2017 Mount Abe renovation project. This committee would inform and engage the Five Town community with project concepts and renovation details, including but not limited to timelines, costs, etc., for for a a November 2017 Mount Abe bond vote. And then this and then this is where I was unsure. The committee would remain in force until a successfully passed bond vote, or. That way, if, if it didn't and they wanted to try. They'd have to come back, yeah. So. And it, it wasn't part of their proposal, but certainly the conversation uh, amongst the committee was if a November bond doesn't happen, probably shouldn't wait four years before the next one goes out. <laughs> but that may be even, again, recognizing the timeline, if the November doesn't happen, Maybe we try to, to bring a group back together, consider that it didn't, uh, assuming that it didn't pass because the cost was too great. Think about how might we pare that down, go back out for another vote before the end of December even, um, to try and still, because again, if we miss that January window, we're gonna tack on 5% to what the cost is gonna be, and it's gonna be even less affordable than it is now. So. so if we say until it's till there's a successfully passed bond vote, then they would still be able to regroup without us having to meet, which our meetings, according to the board work plan, would be every other month. So this would allow them some freedom to regroup and do what they needed to do without us having to meet first to tell them what to do. So. <coughs> Um, you may have already done that. Do we have to give that group flexibility in the bond number, or would that have to go <coughs> to the board? Uh, I think that group, it could work the same way as it did before, that the group would make a recommendation or an adjustment to me, and I would bring it to this board. And if it meant we had to have a special meeting of the Mount Abe board to hear an adjusted amount for a new bond, then we could probably do that. Right. So if it didn't pass and we had to that's the readjustment you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, I think yeah. if it didn't pass, that group that did the communication, which I think I suspect will have some overlap with the committee that was doing the work to begin with, could reconsider with all the information we have, okay, so how do we bring this number down and by how much? Um, and then they recommend to me, I recommend to you, and we go back out for the bond. Does it sound like a plan? Yeah. Any problems anybody had with anything? Then we need a motion to form the committee and to give them that charge. And I have it written down so nobody has to remember it. <laughs> <laughs> so moved. <laughs> All right. Um, but we need a. There's a, a motion to form the communications committee and um, 
and give them this charge, which, which is written here. Is there a second? Second. Carol, a second. Any further discussion? Any? All right. All those in favor of forming the communication, the bond, Mountie and Bond Renovation Communication Committee, and and assigning them this charge to get busy at work. Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. So procedurally, anyone who's interested in that should email you. Not error. Email. Yep. Okay. And maybe we can just let the renovation committee, who just sort of sunsetted, uh, let them know if any, anyone's interested there. Chris, do you mind putting that email out no. to that group? Yeah. I'm there for the. Yeah. It's helpful to note a deadline just so that folks know when to submit their material rather than as soon as possible. I would appoint as soon as possible, but I think if, if they, what is, if we, by the 8th of November, of not November, September, yeah. that would be, that's like just under two weeks, so that, well, just under a week and a little more. So, all right. And we, do, we are not in need of an executive session. So, is there any public comment? Yeah, I do have one for you. Sure. Um, first, I'm really glad to hear that the, um, this group is approving the bond. I think it's great to put in this kind of investment and really don't think that you can put a price tag on offering our community what they deserve in a school. Um, and it sounds like the process for thinking about design is to be determined or to be rolled out after the bond is passed. Um, I think the PR piece for passing the bond is going to be huge. So that communications committee definitely has a lot of work to do in a short amount of time. Um, and I guess two things I was thinking of as I was hearing the presentation. One was that it would be great if, and I don't know if anyone in this group is going to serve on that committee or if um, there's a way to convey this to that group. And if not, you know, maybe I'll, I'll do that at some other time. But um, letting folks know what those priorities were that, that um, you know, formed this plan. Um, and I think that accessibility was in that plan, and I would just also really encourage that group to um, think about how they present all of the different proposed improvements in a way that's of value to all members of our community. Um, I, I agree that a space has a huge impact on how people feel they're valued, and having um, access that you're trying to just make work, um, and that's sort of a secondary thought or um, not ideal, has a very strong message both, both to the folks trying to access a space and to their peers. So um, I'd like to see that be a focus of the group that they um, think about, you know, all of the different improvements and that accessibility is, is a key piece of those along with um, the significant dollars being allotted to lots of other priorities. That should not be a side note that would easily be um, taken off of the table if um, it came down to the cost. So that's it. I wish them luck and I will be a definite supporter. So thank you. Thank you. Other comment? I just have a question. Um, if the three gentlemen there at the table could just give me your names again. I've got everybody else's. That would be really helpful. I'm Tom Darling, D A R L I N J. Thank you. Steve Rooney, R O O N E Y. Jim McClay. Uh, Sandy, by chance, do you have the, the meeting evaluation up? Oh, that you could go on. through that? So just thanks for that. If you give me a second, I can get that open. And the pay orders all got signed? They're all set. Did you sign pay orders? Yes, I, yep, they're all on
Do you want me to just read it out loud? And get yes, please. Okay. So what is the level of engagement of all board members, high, low, and any comments? Consensus? Hi. Sounds good. Was the agenda followed? Yes, no, or comments? I would say yes. Was the agenda linked to the board's annual work plan? I think it is. Yes. Say yes. Good for that. There was sufficient board time spent on community linkage. Yes. So this may be one of those that counts, I think. I think this is a building. <laughs> I like it. That hasn't happened lately. Um, there was sufficient board time spent on ENDS discussion. Um, Not really. I would, I would say the building directly the end. impacts yes. our ENDS. I, I, yeah, so I, I would say yes. I would say yes. Yeah. Yeah. And also, I think in the, in the board, in the presentation uh, from the superintendent, I um, mean, the bullets, there were specific items that addressed the ends and how the building um, specifically linked to the ends. Yep. Yeah, yeah, uh, say yes. Um, there was sufficient board time spent on executive limitations. Um, financial report, financial service. Yep. Board and the consent yes. agenda. Oh, yeah, that was one of those things. Yeah, yes. The consent agenda, excuse me, agenda was used appropriately. Yep. I would yes. say yes. Yes, okay. Uh, what went well with the meeting? I think everyone was engaged. I think the uh, information was clear and people were prepared. <laughs> and we stayed within our allotted time. Mm -hmm. Right? That's good. We're, clo we're close to the We started six minutes late, so. <laughs> okay. Okay, there we go. What concerns do you have with the meeting? Any in particular? No. But not a It doesn't look like there's anything. How could this meeting be improved? None of this. No None comments. Thoughts. No <laughs> comment. Yeah. All right. Done. All right. Mm -hmm. I've got a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All right, Steve. Is there a second? I'll second. Barry. All those in favor of adjourning at 803, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.